What's happening guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to a brand new episode of Caffeinate today for July the 3rd of 2019. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams, as I have already said, and welcome to today's show. Now, if you are brand new to the program, this is a daily gaming news podcast hosted five days a week, Monday through Friday, to keep you up to date and informed on the hottest gaming news coming out of the industry. Whether it be leaks, whether it be official news, we've got it all covered right here. Now, of course, the show is hosted live on twitch.tv slash Samuel Adams, and if you don't want to catch the show live or you can't, you can always listen to the audio version on Anchor.fm, which has links to Spotify, to Apple Podcasts, to Google Podcasts, whatever kind of podcast service you might use. We probably have it over there. But then if you want the video format, you can always check it out on youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media. But today we continue talking about Epic Games because the company remains in the news, not just for Fortnite, which is getting some pretty significant updates, but also the Epic Games Store and the fact that they are going to be footing the bill for crowdfunded games that switch from Steam or another storefront to the Epic Games Store. Because again, a lot of people asking for refunds, but that doesn't mean Epic is passing along the payment for that, the cost of that to the developer and the development team. But then we talk more about NVIDIA's brand new super cards because they are just continuing to pump out more and more tech to make whatever you've got in your PC rig completely and totally inadequate. Uh, on top of that, Apex Legends Season 2. We have the patch notes and what exactly Apex Legends Season 2 entails. I can say I have been watching a good bit of it and man, does it look good. A very fun time to be had there. Sony has at the very last minute swapped some PlayStation Plus games for July of 2019 and I must say it's actually a pretty good change if I do say so myself. We aren't entirely sure what is happening here but it still is worth mentioning because hey, you get a different free game for July 2019 if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber. Then Cuphead. Developer delays Delicious Last Course DLC 2 2020. The next Gran Turismo is going to be, quote, a combination of pressed, wow, I can't read, a combination of past, present, and future. Then we talk more about Stranger Things in Fortnite, and of course, if you do have Spider-Man on the PS4, I've got some pretty good DLC to give you this scoop on. Uh, but that is pretty much the roundup for today's show, and again, if you are brand new or a longtime viewer slash listener, I do hope you enjoy today's program. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into today's top stories. First off, Epic Games will foot the refund bill for Shinmu 3 and future crowdfunded exclusives, according to Tim Sweeney himself. In the last year, a number of games promised for PC release on Steam have moved to the Epic Games Store after an exclusivity deal was pinned, including most recently Shinmu 3. But Epic Games CEO Tim Sweeney says the company is prepared to help make sure that crowdfunded games like Shinmu can switch to the Epic Games Store post-campaign if it makes sense for them without having to worry about losing funding to refunds. In a Twitter statement following today's announcement that Shinmu 3 PC backers could either receive refunds on the game following its storefront switch, Tim Tim Sweeney said on Twitter that Epic was footing the bill and would in the future for similar situations. This is the direct quote. Epic is funding the cost of all Kickstarter refunds resulting from Shinmu 3's move to the Epic Games Store so that refunds won't reduce Yeezynet's development funding, he said. When future games go Epic exclusive after offering crowdfunding rewards on other PC stores, we'll either coordinate with colleagues at the other stores to ensure key availability in advance or guarantee refunds at announcement time. Shinmu 3 is not the first game to swap to Epic Games Store exclusivity on PC between its announcement and its launch, but it is the first crowdfunded game to do so. Initially, backers who requested refunds reported that their requests were denied. Details on refunds for Shinmu 3 will be announced at a later update, though backers can also either request a PS4 code instead of an Epic Games Store code or request a Steam code when the exclusivity deal is up one year after launch. Seems to be a trend happening with the Epic Games Store front, uh, but this is a different situation. Now, if you've been following along with the trend of this kind of situation happening in the industry, uh, traditionally it has been a situation where it wasn't necessarily a crowdfunded game. Now, at the same time, uh, there have been instances in which the Switch has been made at the very last minute, where all of a sudden something goes from being available on Steam one day to being available on Epic the next day, such as in the case of Metro Exodus, which was not exactly the best 
best case for many people that had already pre-ordered on Steam. Of course, they still got their games, but it still makes for a weird marketing situation, and it's not really a good look. Uh, but... This is a different situation entirely because, number one, Shinmu 3 has been crowdfunded from day one. I mean, whenever the guy came out on stage at E3 and announced that Shinmu 3 was happening and it had to happen through the community, that changed things a good bit. And so, throughout the entire development cycle, people that have wanted the game on PC have expected the game to be available on PC. And so, if they want it on Steam, they kind of need to have it on Steam. Uh, but with that being said, it's good to see that they have changed the way uh, that Epic is going to be approaching these crowdfunded games in the future because, again, they are a different skew as compared to even just a basic indie game or even a big AAA game. It's a different niche in and of itself whenever you're talking about a game that has been funded entirely through the people that want to play the game. Uh, it just kind of puts a different skew on things. But with that being said, you might need a new card to play whatever game you might be getting on the Epic Game Store front, and now you can get the NVIDIA Super Editions of various models of its RTX graphics cards with the dates and prices revealed as well. They are faster versions of the 2060, the 2070, and the 2080 GPUs, and they are all coming in July, and they are super prices as well. Yesterday, NVIDIA officially revealed its Super Editions in the RTX 20 series family, less than one year since the RTX series first hit the market. Aside from a sleek chrome finish, the Super Series differs from the now base RTX 2060, 70, and 80, mainly in terms of performance, but also in price, certainly where the 2060 Super is concerned. The 2060 and 70 Super models will launch on July the 9th, with the 2080 Super arriving on July the 23rd. There won't be overclocked versions of the new Super Graphics cards, but found Founders editions will be available online when each one releases. In terms of hierarchy, the 2080 Ti is still the best graphics card in the RTX family, and the RTX 2060 is still the entry-level ray tracing GPU. The rest of the Super cards are staggered between the original 20 series, and no, there won't be a 2080 Ti Super, because the 2080 Ti, it's super enough. But according to Nvidia, how the performance will break down is as follows. The 2060 Super is up to 22% faster than the base model of the 2060 with 8 gigs of memory instead of 6, and it is faster than the GTX 1080 and has nearly identical performance to the RTX 2070. The MSRP for that one, the 2060 Super, is $399. The 2070 Super is up to 24% faster than the base model of the RTX 2070 for the same price, and it's also faster than the GTX 1080 Ti for $499. Now the 2080 Super, which again comes out on the 23rd as compared to the 9th of July for the other two models, is a little bit beefier. With an increased memory speed of up to 15.5 gigabits per second, the RTX 2080 Super is about uh, 10 to 15% faster than the RTX 2080 at the same price, and it's faster than the Titan XP, and that big boy is going to cost you 699 smackers. That's a pretty penny. And to sweeten the deal a little bit more for a limited time, starting on July the 9th, qualifying purchases of any new Super Cards and desktop PCs will include copies of Control and Wolfenstein Youngblood. Of course, Control, the new game from Remedy, which is a company we'll be talking about here in just a moment. And of course, Wolfenstein Youngblood. You guys know Wolfenstein. So the new Super lineup puts the 2060, 70, and 80 in an interesting middle ground. And of course, that just means that there are more cards on the market for you to choose from when you are building a PC or upgrading your current rig. Uh, so, kind of shocking to see these being revealed. Of course, it's just a year into the life cycle. In my machine, personally, I have a 2070, and I have no intention of upgrading to the 2070 Super or the 2080 Super or even a 2080 Ti, because the thing about PC gaming is that you can do it however you want to do it. You can be who you want to be, B-A-R-B-I-E. Barbie girl. Uh, no, but sincerely, you can have a low-end PC and still play games. You can have a high-end PC and still play games. Whatever kind of experience you want to have, whatever kind of budget you might be working with, you can make it work in the PC space. And so these supermodels are probably for those that want to kind of take their game to the next level, but that might not want uh, the best of the best, the pinnacle of what is available, the 2080 Ti. Uh, but again, they are catering to a very wide audience. For me, I am happy with, with very high settings. If you're on a scale of low, medium, uh, high, and then and then ultra or whatever, I'm, I'm a high kind of guy. And so that's kind of where I tend to sit. I don't need the best of the best as long as it's over 60 FPS. 
That was a rhyme. I can do them any time. Uh, but if you do want to pick up the Super Card, again, they are launching on July the 9th for the 2060 and 70 Supermodels. But if you do want the 2080 Supermodel, you will have to wait until July the 23rd. But don't worry, the card you have now can probably run Apex Legends Season 2 because the patch notes have been revealed and Watson, the new legend, has been detailed. A lot is going down in the world of Apex Legends, and that is, of course, the world of Titanfall. Apex Legends Season 2 is bringing with it some of the most substantial balance changes the game has ever had. Thank God. On top of rebalancing certain weapons and heroes, the patch for the new season also altered the map and even added a new legend, Watson. Watson is a more defensive hero than any that have existed in Apex Legends so far. Rather than the traditional strengths of running and gunning, Watson takes a more careful approach, using her electrified fences to establish perimeters and her interception pylon ultimate to stop incoming ordnance and repair damaged shields. As for the weapon changes, the Season 2 patch is bringing with it a new gun called the L-Star one that was in Titanfall, of course, a slow-firing LMG the players can only get from airdrops. There are also a few new attachments in the game, including hammerpoint rounds, which will allow pistols like the P2020 and the Mozambique to do extra damage to unshielded players. And of course, you can check out the entire list of changes that are coming to Apex Legends via Season 2 in the Polygon article, which I have linked down below if you are watching the YouTube version of the show. But overall, I have heard nothing but good things about this update. Now, I will say Watson has not been incredibly well received. Uh, she seems to be a fine character, but nothing that people are going to be going after and clamoring for towards the beginning of the match. Once the newness wears off of this legend, it's probably going to be a little bit of a downhill slope from there. However, the rest of the updates, the map changes, the new gun, the new attachments where you can get uh, a different kind of feel for stuff like the P2020, like the the uh, alternator, there we go, there, the name was escaping my mind, the Mozambique, uh, to be able to change up the balance of the game and to be able to just shift that experience in a new direction is something that I think many Apex Legends players have been wanting for a very long time. Uh, personally, I put dozens and dozens of hours into the game between February and April, I would say, but the re repetition, the, the repetitiveness of this specific experience, it was too much for even me to handle, and this is somebody who plays Battlefield and Call of Duty and stuff like that Apex Legends just got stale very quickly and of course there was a good reason for that the work-life balance of the team behind the game instead of pushing their team to their breaking point like they had with Epic Games and Fortnite reportedly just saying uh, they actually took the time to ensure that both their developers were happy and their game was good and so now with season two upon us you have an entire slew of changes ranked mode which is something people have been wanting for a very long time new gun new legend new balance changes it's a very good update so again if you do want to play Apex Legend, it, 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 it's free. I mean, why wouldn't you? So you can dive in right now on the PC, the PS4, the Xbox One, and give it a go, see if it's something you might be interested in. And you can get that Season 2 Battle Pass if you do want to upgrade your arsenal and get a couple of new bells and whistles for your Legends that, of course, you can show off in-game. But if you don't want Apex Legends, but you do have a PlayStation 4 with PlayStation Plus, I have some good news for you. One of the PlayStation Plus games for July has been traded out. Instead of getting PES 2019, we now get Detroit Become Human in the PlayStation Plus lineup. And of course, it is the Digital Deluxe Edition, which is the one that includes Heavy Rain. That is pretty cool as well. Uh, so, of course, that's pretty much what the rundown is. That's all you need to know. Of course, you're still getting the uh, other little small racing game, Horizon Chase Turbo. But you are going to be getting, again, the Digital Deluxe Edition of Detroit Become Human. Which is ironic, because it's actually a game that I legitimately thought a couple of days ago, hey... I kind of want to play that, so now I have the opportunity to dive in. But no one is sure of what caused the swap. Maybe its imminent PC release is the reason, but at least a relatively high-profile game is replacing PES 2019. There is nothing against indie titles being given out for free, but I do feel, the author says, that bigger budget titles should complement the smaller ones each month. With PS3 and Vita games no longer on offer, there is no really 
no really any kind of not really any kind of reason at all why both games should be lesser known ones and of course we can make excuses and whatnot when it comes down to what games are included with PlayStation Plus but they are free games and not every month can be a mind-bogglingly good winner that's really what I'm trying to get at here uh, there are so many instances of good games being included with PlayStation Plus but whenever you have a great month it's generally followed by a bad month because you can't outdo some of the best months of PlayStation PlayStation Plus that have been put out. But this one, as far as it goes, is a pretty good swap. Of course, PES 2019, it was very fitting for the World Cup uh, to be included in that kind of mix where it did have this kind of uh, football international vibe going on. But again, to be able to pull that and put a bigger name game in there is a pretty good move that is going to get a lot of people more excited uh, as compared to the PES 2019 slash Horizon Chase Turbo bundle there. But if you do want to dive in and check it out again, that is the July PlayStation Plus lineup. One more time, just so you know. You get the digital deluxe edition of Detroit Become Human, which includes Heavy Rain, and on top of that, Horizon Chase Turbo is also going to be on the slate. But you know what's not on the slate? The Cuphead DLC, because the Delicious Last Course DLC has been moved to 2020. Studio MDHR says it wants to avoid crunch making Cuphead's final DLC. Cuphead's final episode is going to need more time in the oven. Developer Studio MDHR announced today, that would be yesterday, that Cuphead The Delicious Last Course has been delayed to 2020. The add-on was originally planned for release sometime this year. Studio MDHR said it wants to continue to polish Cuphead's DLC and to avoid an unhealthy development cycle, an increasingly common refrain. While we initially announced a 2019 release date for the Delicious Last Course expansion, our highest priority is making sure this new adventure meets the meticulous level of care and quality we always strive for, Chad Moldenhauer, co-director at Studio MDHR, said in a statement. We want to be absolutely certain that this is the next adventure and it feels at home in the world of Cuphead and is full of moments that surprise and delight players. Furthermore, the development of the original game has taught us a great deal about the importance of making things in a way that's healthy and sustainable for our team. With that in mind, we are taking a page out of Chef Saltbaker's book and spending the necessary time to get the recipe just right. This means we will be moving the release of the Delicious Last Course to 2020. This was not an easy decision to make, but we are confident it's one that will result in a higher quality experience that's all the sweeter when it does arrive. And of course, it has an all new island to explore and a new character, Miss Chalice, and the add-on is in development for the Switch, the PC, the Xbox One, and a new teaser for the DLC can be shown as seen above in the article. And of course, for those that don't know, Cuphead, legendary, legendary indie game that is all hand-drawn, all beautiful. It has one of the most unique aesthetics in the entire gaming industry in 2019. I'm a huge fan of the way this game looks, the way it plays. It's just a genuinely fun game uh, and one that has a lot of passion poured into it. But again, this is just another instance of a game that is being developed, a DLC that's being developed with the developer's health in mind, with the quality of the game in mind. And whenever you have those two things combined together there literally can be no wrong done uh, whenever you focus on ensuring that players get the best experience possible at whatever the cost that's the best a developer can ever do uh, I'm sorry, you know, that's that's really uh, an inconvenience for some people that we're looking forward to the DLC, and I totally understand that. But would you rather have a DLC that's early, maybe coming out in July or August, and then it's unfulfilling, or would you rather have a genuinely fantastic DLC experience that builds on what Cuphead has already laid down and potentially becomes an... Uh, necessary addition to the game, one that you can't go without. Uh, of course, that's just the nature of delays, and that's the way that I've always seen any kind of delay. Uh, if a developer needs another three years on a game, then so be it. I would rather have a genuinely good game than one that's not worth playing at all, but that happens to be on time, whatever that even means. Now, I will say, if you really want to dive into it and you really want to get to the nitty gritty of it, maybe we shouldn't be talking about release dates before we know specifically when something is going to be coming out, because that puts an unfair constraint on the development team, even though somebody sitting in a corporate office somewhere might just want to release it around a holiday season or during the fall whenever most things come out to make a quick buck. That's not the way life works, Sonny. I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you. But I digress. We could go off on that all day. If you do want to pick up the Cuphead DLC, it's coming out on the Switch, the PS... PC. Ha, my bad. The Switch, the PC, and the Xbox One in the beginning of 2020. But Cuphead is out right now on the platforms as aforementioned. However, 
Let's talk about Gran Turismo, a game that won't be out until long after 2020, probably towards the beginning of the PlayStation 5 generation. But the next Gran Turismo, of course, the famous PlayStation branded racing game, if you will, will be a combination of past, present, and future. They say at GT Planet, we recently got the opportunity to sit down with Gran Turismo series creator Kazunori Yamauchi. The roundtable chat took place during a break in the schedule of the Nuremberg World Tour event, and you can read the first part of the discussion that they had over via the link, which is in the article, which I have linked down below. Did I mention there's a link? Uh, but with all the industry talk going on right now, centered on the next gen of consoles, it is still a little surprise that there is a lot of focus on the next generation of Gran Turismo. GT Sport may only be 21 months old, but it too will have to face the future in the coming months. What does the future look like? GT Sport was a controversial departure from the series norm, and many outlets, including GT Planet, marked it down for the relatively lack of single-player content. It's a situation Polyphony Digital has sought hard to remedy, so does this mean the next Gran Turismo will go back to its roots, or will it be GT Sport 2? Quote, I think in terms of races themselves and physics, GT Sport has really touched the best place we could ever have reached. We're at a very good place, says Yamauchi. On the other hand, we've obviously worked, excuse me, on the other hand, obviously, we're working on the next Gran Turismo already, and the world of sport we've already achieved through GT Sport is something I've always imagined to be the future of Gran Turismo. We are able to establish that now. If the team was able to realize the future of Gran Turismo already, does that mean there is room for more focus on the strengths of the older Gran Turismo games? And this is where you tune back in if you're a racing fan. I normally don't play. Excuse me. You can just switch those words around. I don't normally play the past editions of Gran Turismo, answers Yamauchi. But since I started doing the world tours, the players, they're all young guys, but they all bring GT2 or GT3 with them. Like, how old were you when this came out? So I've had more opportunity to play them recently, and it's surprising how much I have forgotten. Yamauchi muses that perhaps his ongoing curiosity and pursuit of the future means that sometimes he can't forget the past, but clearly the players and fans don't. Having done all these world tours, it gives me the opportunity to feel the history of Gran Turismo, he adds. It gives me pointers and hints of the things we should make sure that we do in the future of the series. What does this mean for the next title, whether it's GT7 or GTS2? I think the next title that we are going to create will be a combination of the past, present, and future, a complete form of Gran Turismo, he answers. And of course, GT Planet does continue to go on, talk more about uh, everything that was discussed with Polyphony Digital and the creator of Gran Turismo. But interesting to hear, the future of Gran Turismo could in fact be incorporating the various elements that have made the game that it is today. Uh, but on top of that, looking into the future to see what is coming, uh, to have new ideas, this sounds like a very healthy racing game, specifically when it comes to racing games. Uh, looking at Forza Horizon, and specifically, the games continually build on what the originals laid down and what its predecessor began to bring to the table and then just adds a bit to it and creates a new kind of experience. That sounds like something that could definitely uh, be a big benefit for the Gran Turismo series. Now, I will say, in a brief aside... If you haven't played Gran Turismo Sport, a fantastic racing game that one is. Now, is it on par with the appearance of something like a Forza Horizon 4 or whatever kind of other racing game you might have? Not necessarily, but it does look gorgeous. I will say continual updates have streamed through the game over the past 21 months since it has been released, and there is a huge amount of content there for racing fans. So if you do want to dive in and you are hankering for a racing game on the PS4, that is a pretty good one to dive in. Too. But the future of Gran Turismo sounds like it's a very exciting time nonetheless, and one that I will definitely uh, be interested in whenever the PlayStation 5 does end up rolling down the pipe, because that could be probably holiday 2020, and so I would say you're going to be seeing some kind of Gran Turismo, uh, maybe even on launch, but if not, then maybe in 2021 or at the latest 2022. Again, that's a pretty wide prediction period, but hey, sounds realistic to me. But if you don't want to wait for that, you can always just jump back into good old Fortnite, thanks to Epic Games. And a collaboration with Stranger Things makes things just a little bit more interesting for you. Fortnite is no stranger 
Aha! To big budget entertainment collaborations. It's already welcomed in Iron Man, Thor, Captain America, and Hawkeye as part of its endgame mode and let players stealthily assassinate their rivals via its recent John Wick partnership. For a while now, Epic Games has teased the introduction of something a little more paranormal as part of the tie-in with Netflix's Stranger Things. With Season 3 of the Smash TV series only one day away, the Fortnite world has become a touch more threatening, with dark portals appearing in the game's popular Mega Mall area. If you head to Mega Malls or mall, you will find gates complete with floating spores attached to the walls of various stores. Unlike the TV show, they don't take you to the upside down, at least at the moment, but instead transport you to another part of the mall itself. Although the gates have only appeared today, Fortnite has hosted a Scoops Ahoy store for nearly two months. Scoops Ahoy is the name of the ice cream parlor inside Starcourt Mall that Steve Harrington and new character Robin work at in the third season of the TV show. Starcourt Mall will open in summer 1985, which is the year in which the new season is set. In a further nod to the series, small consumable ice creams are dotted around Mega Mall, granting plus five health for every one eaten. Although Epic Games has yet to confirm the crossover, it is likely that the portals and ice creams won't won't be the only Stranger Things elements you will see in the game. If Avengers Endgame and John Wick limited time modes were anything to go by, we will likely see an upside down themed world and various in-game emotes and skins hit the store. And of course, you can always hypothesize as to what you were going to be getting, but man, Fortnite does well with these collaborations. Uh, of course, again, I'm not somebody who has continued to play the game in the months and years since it has been released. I just kind of sit back and admire whenever they have a good idea. This, quite frankly, is a good idea because Stranger Things is a giant cultural phenomenon, and it's not shocking to see it bring we're being brought into the world of Fortnite. Uh, but if you do want to dive in and check it out again, you can kind of look for this giant, um, let's not talk about what that looks like. You can see the thing growing on the side of many walls in the mall itself whenever you dive into a round of Fortnite or two. If you do want to check out the upside down, which again, at the moment is non-existent and these are pretty much just riffs, but only on a wall. But maybe you have some sense in you and you don't want to play some Fortnite, but you should be playing Spider-Man on PS4 because they have two brand new Far From Home suits available in the latest free update. Let's get it, baby. You can never truly have enough suits in Marvel Spider-Man, and while I don't ever see myself moving away from the Spider-Punk look, I like that there's an outfit for every move. This week, Insomniac Games added a pair of new suits to the PS4 game that piggyback off of Spider-Man Far From Home. This clever bit of cross-promotion is free, but in order to use Far From Home's upgraded suit and stealth suit, you will need to be far enough into Spider-Man to have unlocked Peter Parker's advanced suit. Basically, if you have made it through the game's opening and pushed it a little further, you are good to go. I haven't seen the film yet, the author says, but I am increasingly amped to see where Insomniac goes next. And of course, if you do want to check out the, uh, the suits themselves, you got some pretty cool looking uh, pieces of hardware there for you to enjoy. I will say there is the first suit, which is the basic suit from Far From Home, and if you do want to check out the other suit, that's pretty much what you can expect. Uh, but of course, big, 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 big Spider-Man movie coming out for the summer of 2019, and of course, one of the biggest movies of the entire year. Of what I have heard, it acts as a pretty good epilogue. I believe that's the one that comes after the main event uh, to Avengers Endgame. If you do need a bit of a, a palate cleanser, if you need to see what happens after the fact. Uh, but if you do want to just dive in and check out one of the best games on the PlayStation 4, could not recommend Spider-Man enough. It is just so pure, so good, so fresh, so clean. Just like this suit that has been fresh pressed and tailored to fit you in game even if it doesn't fit you in real life. But with that being said, that rounds out today's episode of Caffeinate. Of course, if you are brand new to the show, welcome on in. And this show, again, as I said at the beginning, is hosted five days a week, Monday through Friday, live on twitch.tv slash Samuel Adams if you do want to check out the hottest gaming news of the day. But then it's on YouTube, it's on podcast services. All of these links can be found down below. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I will talk to you soon and... Peace.